Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to take part to this 2018 edition of Interconference, having the opportunity to present the results of a research work developed with Professor Rodica Eilinke in the framework of the project Pratique Educative Enseignante Parentale en Polynesie Française, Teachers and Parents Educative Practices in French Polynesia. Our lecture focuses on declared practices of parents in Nukuiva Island in the Marquesas Archipelago. According to the results of our fieldwork, these parents perceive the parenting performance as normative, but, paradoxically, they also perceive their practices as extremely liberal. But, what are the causes of such a lack of coherence between attitude and practices among Polynesian parents? Several authors have been exploring the impact of domestic parents' practices on school adaptation of their children. Educative practices may be observed in the framework of everyday routines, characterized by spontaneous interactive styles, like playing, domestic chores and jobs around the house, or as a part of activities especially focused on learning, characterized by epistemic interactive styles, supporting exploration and discoveries, visiting a museum, assisting for homework. In our previous works, we have been developing a classification based on the quality of the educative interaction, the guiding style, parents impose procedures, objectives and goals, the evocative style, Parents encourage children to argue and to explain their decisions. The autonomizing style. Uh, parents leave children free to discover, supporting their trial and error activities. And the disjunct functioning style, characterized by a lack of dialogic interactions. These typologies are a very useful tool for scholars in socio-anthropology of education and comparative education studies because they contribute to understand how the family members play the role of educators and to better understand the domestic causes of the school's success. Actually, recent research in socio-anthropology of education suggests that the degree of coherence between the educative styles of parents and teachers influences school outcomes. Motivated to explore this peculiar continuity, we developed a research project focused on teachers and parents' educative practices in French Polynesia, supposing that there is a correlation between parenting practices and school achievements. In this lecture, we focus on the data gathered in Nukuiva, the main island of the Marquesas archipelago in the northern sector of French Polynesia. Most of the inhabitants belongs to the Enata autochthonous community, speaking the Eoenana, an Oceanian language with Austronesian origins. To evaluate declared parenting practices, we opted for a survey tool, the Scale of Educative Parental Skills, Echelle de Compétences Educatives Parentales. The survey explores three main domains, the educative attitudes of parents, their educative practices, and the parents' perceptions concerning their parental skill. Data presented in this lecture were gathered among parents of pupils belonging to the last two levels of the primary schools. Every question is associated to an item and every item to a scale. The first one, the attitude scale, organized the items in three groups of items. Rigidity flexibility, distrust, trust, internal control, external control. The second one, the practices scale, Organize the items on two groups, normative creative and strict permissive. Once the survey were passed, we analyzed the items included on the attitude scale with the aim to describe how parents perceive their educative attitudes and how they auto-evaluate their parental role. The chart show the scores obtained by our study subjects on the attitude scale. Score 10-12 
correspond to an extremely controlling attitude. Score 14-15 correspond to an average and standard normative attitude, a relatively frequent way of parenting including some authoritarian behavior, but also a large space allowed to exploration, creativity and dialogic participation to the family everyday life. No parents obtained the score upper than 16, associated with tolerant and extremely tolerant parenting style. Although, in terms of attitudes, most of parents declare they adopt a standard normative attitude, this constatation needs to be interpreted prudently. In fact, our survey demonstrated that this standard way of parenting, with an average level of normativity, is, in most of cases, the effect of the alignment of attitudes that are intrinsically polarized, as, for indeed, in rigidity flexibility axis, focused on controlling or tolerating attitudes, and distrust, trust access. In other words, parents declared that, at home, they impose a strict normative framework, a series of obligations which breaking is associated to a severe punishment, but concerning their children's skills, um, their ability to handle things, they affirm to be sincerely confident, tolerant and open-minded. Our survey allowed us to identify parenting skills, taking into consideration the declared practices, how parents describe their parental role. The scores obtained by our study subjects has to be interpreted as follows. A score between 16 and 17 corresponds with formalist practices, typical of parents focused on the formal respect of external norms, imposed or reproduced ideologies dogs and beliefs, having few verbal interactions with their children. A score between 22 and 23 corresponds to an average level of normativity, combining a system of obligation and sanctions and a permissive approach to the intellectual development of the child. A score between 30 and 32 correspond to an extremely liberal practice, characterized by a low level of parental supervision and by an horizontal hierarchy in family structure. The data we gathered show that the parents participating in our survey situate themselves between the average normativity, 22-23 points, and extremely liberal profiles, 30-32 points. Actually, extremely liberal practices are typically associated to child-centered families, where the spoiled child is omnipresent and constantly overstimulated. As we did for the declared attitudes, declared practices may be discussed in a more detailed manner by the analysis of the results obtained in every axis constituting the ISEP scale, especially observing the scores obtained in normative encouraging access and the scores obtained in strict permissive access. In fact, the data we gathered show that if on one hand most of parents in Nukuiva perceive their practices as an effective tool to facilitate the intellectual development of their children, and their ability to elaborate the surrounding social and natural environment. On the other side, they do not exclude to use the authority to protect the family hierarchy. According to our ecosystemic approach, our results need to be interpreted, taking into consideration the cultural and geographic context. Actually, the significant statistical deviations we observed between the scores obtained in declared attitude and practices scales, and the fact that they perceive the parental attitude as normative unlike they consider their parental practice as encouraging and tolerant, confirm what we observed 
using an ethnographic approach during our fieldwork. The parents' attitudes oscillate permanently as an effect of an incessant dynamic to respond to the imperious needs of the ecosystemic upper levels. The local ideologies, beliefs, customs and traditions, the civic duties and the participation to the global markets. This attitude oscillation affecting the parents' educative role is shared by other social communities. For indeed, we observed similarities among the Wayana Palai, a native community living in the Amazon rainforest, but also among the Enata living in other island of the Marquesas archipelago, suggesting the hypothesis that such a schizophrenic attitude is the effect of postmodern dynamics in postcolonial territories. Nevertheless, the results obtained in this exploratory study do not aspire to display an universal trend. A larger set of researches need to be developed to unveil what is changing in parenting dynamics in postcolonial contexts. We hope that our work may contribute to a better understanding of the domestic factors that incide on children's scholar careers. With optimism, we also hope that it may contribute to a deeper reflection about the need to develop inclusive education systems structured to allow an horizontal dialogue between school and families, with the aim to take conscience of the expectation, the educative ideologies of both social actors, school and families, especially among ethnic communities and minority groups. Thank you very much.